Hello, this is Valkyrie612 here. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to sink a ship from uh, 20 meters. So uh, you're too deep to use your periscope, uh, and you're completely out of sight, obviously. And um, so you won't be able to use the, the uh, usual techniques in order to make this happen. So right now, as you can see, I'm at, I'm actually going down to uh, 20 meters. And I saw our minutes told me that there was a contact back there. And so I'm going to listen in. Alright, so it sounds like... He sounds like a merchant because he's chugging along like that in steam. It's got to be relatively close, probably within uh, three kilometers, or uh, no, between three kilometers and maybe about five kilometers. He's no more than five. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is uh, a lot of bearing line. Pause here. Plot a bearing line to zero six zero. Okay, and then unpause. Now, uh, just a little word about this. Um, trying to get an accurate course and speed and uh, distance to uh, target. Uh, without using Acusona, without using uh, a periscope or you know, visual aids of any kind, is very, very difficult. Uh, in fact, in, on uh, modern submarines, they have a, a complicated a computer system, basically, that, uh, that constantly samples the, uh, the sound coming from, from the target and uh, basically creates uh, probability plots about where the target is exactly. And then this, the torpedoes they use to sink their ships um, are smart. And they can they have their own built-in sonar and they can listen in for the contact uh, and, and home in on it. Okay, well, back in the 1930s, 1940s, they didn't have any of that, so we have to do it the hard way. So I've been waiting a little bit here and I'm going to take another bearing on it. I need to see how he's moved. There he is. Okay, so he's about. Okay, what I'm doing is I'm going into the center of the sound. So I'm sort of averaging it out. Okay, he's at about 0, 0.56 now. So where is he? Is he down here on this bearing line? Is he down here? Well, he's somewhere on this bearing line. Now, I usually go out to about 3,000 meters, which is about the range that sound will travel uh, to give you a nice, solid sound like you're hearing. I don't, I don't know if the programmers intended that or not, but it seems that they did. So they, do, they, they did put layers um, in the water, meaning uh, special layers of sound. You have to go to certain, you, know, uh, you have to go below a certain depth in order to hear, uh, and that's that's very realistic. So I'm not really sure if that or not, but I'm going to use the standard of 3,000 meters anyway. Okay. So if I had to guess, I would say that he is he's got to be somewhere. Well, he's well, obviously along this bearing line somewhere, but he's probably. Uh, either uh, plus or minus a thousand 
meters or plus or minus one kilometer in each direction. this line here, but I'm fairly sure that he's coming towards me. If he was going away from me, he would have to be, uh, the bearing lines could still be the way they are, but it would accept that, uh, the sound would be getting a little weaker. But he, he could very well be going away, but it sounds like he's coming towards me. Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure that out in a minute. Somewhere in this room. Pretty sure of that. Okay, so let's get another bearing line here. So it's see something. You can hear that he's moving out um, from, uh, from the uh, direction of my microphone. Okay, it's at about 049 now. Somewhere along this bearing line, somewhere between here, anywhere down here, uh, uh, when I'm connecting these three bearing lines here, he's going away. Here, from here to here to making sure all three of these lines are uh, connected, he's coming towards me. If I go further up, notice. I'm not connecting the third bearing line, so I need to stay on this bearing line. So anywhere between roughly about here and all the way up this bearing line here, these are all possibilities here. Okay? But I'm staying within my 3,000, uh, or within my plus or minus 1,000 meters of my uh, 3,000 meter circle. So I'm going to I'm going to estimate and we'll put it back here. So I've got an estimation of where his force is. Okay. Alright, let's take another uh, reading in just a moment. Speed up the game a little bit. Slow it down. Now take another reading. Okay. He's at zero three one. So he's really he's really moving. And when his bearings are opening like that, he's he's close. He's relatively close. It's zero three one degrees. Let's get it pause it so we have to get out of the way. Okay, zero three one degrees. So he's really open here. Now he's somewhere over here. All right, so I had him isolated to this area in here, okay, where he could, um, where I could connect all three of those bearing lines here. I had a course line this way. Here's the course line right here. So I'm going to extend that course line through the new bearing line I just drew. Okay. 
And this is my estimation of where he's at. Okay, I'm going to say that he's plus or minus uh, about maybe one kilometer. Well, he's not this close to me because he'd be a lot louder. So, but let's say probably about 500 is a fair guess. Okay. All right, so somewhere within this range, he is here. So I'm crisscrossing that, or I'm going to going to um, the average this out here and use this course line and I'm going to assume that that's his actual course line. Now the next thing I'm going to do is plot a course. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is plot a course for myself here so that I'm 90 degrees uh, from this guy being. Okay, and that's 90 right there. Ideally, I want to be about 600 meters from him. So I'm going to plot where 600 meters is. Now, that's if I know for sure where he is. But because I'm really unsure, I'd say plus or minus 500 meters, which is significant. Uh, I'm going to cut that normal distance in half here to 300 meters. Now, if he's closer than 400 meters, I can't shoot him, but I I can see where his course has to be going. So he'll be he'll start um, to open me or start leaving me this way, uh, and I'm pretty confident that his distance is going to be greater than 300. Because if that were, if that were not the case, he would have to be to travel something like this. And as you see, I have a bearing line. Uh, that goes out here, so he's got to be more than 300. All right, here we go. Go ahead and increase my speed. And we're going to go to this point here. Yeah, then course we off. Now, how fast is this guy traveling? Right, we're going to find that out in a, in a second. I estimate. Nimm Kurs wieder auf. Alright, so I'm actually going to go ahead and slow down here. Machine stop. Take another bearing. Wherever this guy, he's got to be to my right now. Okay. It's at 048 for my location right now. He's approximately here. I know I'm doing three knots, if that's okay. I'm slowing down, so I'm gonna I'm going to uh, use the clock now. Reverse it. Takes the ship a little bit to slow down and, and speed up as well. Okay, that's 30 seconds, so I'm not going to go the full five. You'll see what we're doing in a second here. Going one minute. Okay, he's at one, I'm at one minute. Okay, now I'm going to listen in. Loudest sound here. It's zero three nine degrees. Okay, so he's at zero three nine degrees now. It's right here. All right, so I've got an X. Gonna mark right here at the end of my circle. 
and measure the distance. And this is not very accurate, by the way, but it's pretty accurate. It's pretty good. Okay, so that was one minute, and he did about, see, 200 starts about here. And he actually did about 250, two, I'm going to say about maybe 240 or so, something like that. Okay. And at these distances, uh, the um, being a little off like that doesn't matter a whole lot. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going back to my calculator here, so it's 240 meters, right, uh, per second. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's per minute, rather, per second, times 60 minutes. That's 14.4 knots. We divide that by 1,000, 14.4 knots. Okay. I'll go ahead and do that. Well, you don't have to do that. But now you want to um, divide that by 1.85. That's the conversion to knots. And he's doing about 7, you know, 7.78 uh, knots is what this calculation says. But uh, <clears throat> I am being a little bit uh, liberal with my distances. So I'm going to average it out between 5 and 7. And uh, I'm going to say he's doing about six knots. All right. So here he is, somewhere around here, actually. He may be a little further out. Don't know. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take another uh, bearing line here shortly, but I'm saying that he's doing. Machine stop. Okay, he's at about zero two six for me now. Alright, so he's getting pretty close. Somewhere around, oh, he's on this line somewhere. I think an estimation said he was there. However, he could also be technically. could be out here. Could be anywhere in the circle here, closing me. Like that. Okay. So I'm going to sit here, and when he gets in front of me, I'm going to shoot a, uh, a spread. Umschalten auf Salve. Umschalten auf Salve. Umschalten auf Salve. Rohr 1 wird bewässert. Rohr 2 wird bewässert. Rohr 3 wird bewässert. I'm at 20 meters. Rohr 4 wird bewässert. Okay. I know that he is um, going to be passing me with... Uh, with with his um, port beam. So I'm going to say uh, it's angle on the bow that it's going to be 90 degrees. I know he's doing six knots. And what's his range? Now that's that's the key here. He's If I keep this here, I'm saying that he's, he's going to be at about 300 meters. Now if he was that close, it would be very loud. And he's not. So I can safely assume now that this course line is incorrect and that its course line is actually somewhere in the neighborhood here. So I want to shoot ideally at 600 meters. So I'm going to, I'm going to draw a line 600 meters out here. Okay. Where I'm at. All right. So ideal, this is, this is where I want to shoot. I'm going to say that his course runs parallel to, to the old course here. His real course is something like this. Now I know this seems like a lot of work just to sink a ship. I've done this with just one torpedo uh, you know, a few times. Um, 
I've done it in many different uh, conditions. So we'll see if this works out. All right, so now, so the range I'm going to say is about uh, 600. Okay, here's six. All right. Uh, my actual heading here, if you look down here, is 344, four, so I need to adjust this. So that's three, five, zero. Row. All right, so that's about three four four. Now. Okay, uh, readjust this angle of bow. Now what I'm going to do is just. All right, I should shoot now. <laughs> I was going to say I was going to wait until he passes in front of my ship. He's starting to now. Okay, yeah, he's starting to pass. I'm going to go ahead and angle off the bow slightly. It would be easier if I just wait until you cross the bow, but I waited a little too long. All right. So he's out here somewhere. Right in front, he's right in front of me. Um, my, my bearing is, well, it's accurate enough. It's not precise, uh, this dial, but it's, uh, it's accurate enough. That should be okay. All right. But I'm going to vary my bearing, uh, by just a few degrees for the, um, for each one of the torpedoes that I fire. And first thing I'm going to do is, uh, is set the depth down a little bit. So I want to, I want to, I want to sink them. Uh, and, uh, if I get it well below the waterline there with um, with a magnetic pistol, that should be fine. All right, so here we go. Stand by to fire. going in a line right now. So, <laughs> I might not get them. Let's see. Let's make more. Alright, well have fun with the game guys, and I'll see you around.